Hello and welcome to the Skyworld channel. Today, this is my $400 gaming PC. So if you want a gaming PC that can pretty much max out any of your favorite PC games, then this is the gaming PC for you. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and list out some of the hot PC games out right now and give you some average FPS recordings. So anyways, for Battlefield 4, expect about 30 FPS for everything maxed out, ultra settings, 1080p, and all that good stuff, and, and expect about 30 FPS in that game. Now for Minecraft, expect about 60 FPS easily with any max, any graphical settings in that game. That game is supremely easy to run on this gaming PC, so expect 30 FPS and above in Minecraft. Now for Armor 3, expect about 30 FPS with everything maxed out, which is pretty good for this gaming PC. And then lastly for DayZ, expect 30 FPS with all of the graphical settings maxed out. However, that game is still an alpha and it still isn't that optimized for PC yet, so expect in the future to get more FPS in the game. However, notes, you can overclock the processor in this build to increase the average FPS in all of these games to get a better gaming experience. And also, you can also ease off of the graphical settings to get in that really good 45 to 60 FPS range in all of these games. Anyways, to get straight into the build, for the processor, I chose the Athlon 860K. So this is a new AMD processor that came out from AMD, and this is following up their Athlon series on the FM2 socket. So anyways, this is a quad-core processor based off of the new Steamroller architecture, which is a huge improvement from the old pile driver architecture on the 750K and 760K. So anyways, this is operating at 3.7 GHz that can turbo boost up to 4.0 GHz, and also this, com this CPU is completely overclockable to get even more FPS in your games. Now for the motherboard, I chose the ASRock FM2 888M. Extreme 4 Plus FM2 Plus motherboard. So this is pretty much a standard motherboard for gaming on the CPU. It has the FM2 socket, which will pretty much hold the Athlon 860K in this build. It can support up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. This has plenty of I/O ports, with having two USB 3.0 ports and four USB 2.0 ports. And also, since this is the 880X chipset, expect to overclock that 860K Athlon to at least 4.5 gigahertz on this motherboard, which is pretty good for its $60 price tag. So for the RAM, which is the Crucial Ballistic Sport 8GB RAM stick. So pretty much this is standard for PC gaming because one, it has 8GB of DDR3 memory, which is plenty for gaming. Trust me, your games have the most will take up 6GB of that 8GB RAM stick. So don't worry about RAM capacity in that case. And also this is low profile, which means you can fit a large CPU cooler in this gaming PC that will not interfere with your RAM, which that is good. So anyways, this is just pretty much a very good RAM stick to go with for this gaming PC. Now, for the hard drive, which was the Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard drive. This is pretty much standard for any sort of gaming PC because it is it has 1TB of storage, it's pretty reliable from a lot of customer reviews, it's very cheap, and overall it's just a great hard drive for a gaming PC because it'll load up Windows 7 quite quickly, it'll load up your games quite quickly, and a lot of other things. So pretty much this is the recommended hard drive to go with for any sort of budget gaming PC. So for the graphics cards, I have two options. I have a XFX Radon R7265 and a Gigabyte R7260X. So to go with the R7265, it will in fact raise the price of this PC by about $30, but it is certainly worth it because this is an amazing graphics card for its price point. This is very powerful since it has the R7265 chip. This has 2GB of VRAM, which is more than enough for 1080p gaming, and also this card has been known to run a lot of PC games pretty much across the board, ultra settings 1080p, quite well, so this is a pretty good graphics card for its price point. Now if you want to spend, um, so if you want that $400 price tag, then go with the R7260X from Gigabyte. It is off of the R7260X chipset, which of course, you know, still good considering its low price tag. This has 1GB of VRAM, which will be just enough for 1080p gaming, and still this is a pretty good card for its price point. So for the case, I chose the Raid Max Stingray 249B ATX Mint Tower. So there are a few things that make this $20, $20 case still worth getting. It has USB 3.0 on the front of the case. It has four fan ports, so you can go ahead and mount a lot of fans in this PC to still have good airflow. This also is a ATX mid tower, which is big enough to hold all the components in this build. And lastly, this has a steel construction, which means that this this PC case is still pretty well built and solid. So don't expect any sort of deterioration to happen in the case for a long time. So for the power supply, I have the Corsair CX430. 
So this is an any plus bronze power supply, which means that this will run at a pretty efficient rate. So you can save a bit of money in your power bill. This also has 430 watts of wattage, which is more than enough for this gaming PC, and even is enough to support overclocking on the 860K. And also, this is Corsair made, so expect this power supply to last for a very long time, since it's made out of pretty good components for its price point, and still is Corsair made, which Corsair power supplies just have very good ratings across the board. So this is a pretty good power supply to go with. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, favorite, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and this is the Scavel Channel signing out.